Today, I'll be attempting to 100% cup it in 24 hours. This is quite literally my first time playing, as you can see. So like most people, I'm gonna suck in the beginning. But my incentive to get better is fueled by the 24-hour time limit. So let's just say I had to turn pro pretty fast. And off talk, let's start a new game. Right off the bat, we need to choose between the character that is named after the game or the guy who doesn't get enough screen time like Luigi. Hmm, red or blue? Communism or democracy? You know what? I think it's time Mugman took the spotlight over Mr. Goody Cuphead. I do love rooting for the underdogs. Come on here, friend. You and I are in for quite an adventure. And what I mean by adventure, I mean lots and lots of suffering. Okay, so here's the rundown of the story. There once were two brothers named Mugman and Cuphead who lived with an old uh -huh. kettle. One day, they wanted to try their luck at gambling in the devil's casino. They win a bunch of money and the devil shows up to raise the stakes by offering them the whole place if they win one more time. Then Cuphead, who couldn't resist the offer, rolls the dice. Even though Mugman tells him it's a bad idea. Listen to him, you no good son of a teapot. Anyways, they end up losing to the devil. Backs for a second chance. The devil gives them that chance by sending them off to collect more souls for him. Then he kicks them out and they run to the old kettle for help. Once we got to the old kettle's house, we were told to deal with the consequences of our mistakes and were given some of the kettle's magical brain juice for some power-ups. Okay, time for the tutorial. Let's see what we're working with. Hold down to crouch. Check. Spacebar to jump. Check. D to dash. Check. Down and spacebar to descend. Check, check. W to shoot. Check. A to lock game. Check aroni. Spacebar in midair to parry. Check, check, check. And who do we have here? Well, well, well. If it isn't my brother who got us into this whole mess. Yeah, I think it's better we just leave him be. Enjoy floating for all of eternity. Alright, next we got shift for special moves. Oh wait, what? I can shoot an energy blast? Things just got good. This is so much fun. Oh man, I'm out of charges. Reload, reload. I can literally do this forever. Oh yeah, I forgot I was in the middle of a challenge. Alright, I think that's enough horsing around. Look out world, here I come. The first guy I met was an apple with an injury that clearly needed medical attention. I listened to him ramble on about his glory days and then received gold coins for being his therapist for a few seconds. After that, I went to tackle my first run and gun challenge at Forest Follies. <laughs> a little embarrassing to admit, but in a matter of seconds, I was already down to one life. These stinking flowers would come at me from every angle and won't leave me alone. One would even fall Run. from the sky and ambush me. There were also these shrooms that straight up farted at me, plants that spat seeds and burst into flames, and several other creatures that were absolutely kicking my patoots. Not to mention I had a hard time parrying things when they weren't staying still anymore. Though the beginning was a bit overwhelming, I got the hang of the mechanics of the game and proceeded to easily get a decent grade for the map. Once I had done that, a bridge appeared that connected to the other side of the island. My first thought was obviously to cross it, but then a sudden realization stop me from continuing on. And funny enough, it was because of this. An A- minus for my first challenge? That's like taking out a girl on the first date and they say it was an A- minus at best. That's like going on your first road trip and your friends tell you you're an A- minus driver. That's like competing in the Olympics and you get a bronze medal and your competitors tell you it's because of your A- minus genetics. Okay, I think you get the point. So the perfectionist I was, I went back to get a perfect score, which I beautifully did by fulfilling all the necessary requirements, as you can see right here. In fact, I made it my mission to not move on to the next bus if I wasn't gonna see that A+. Plus. And what a huge mistake that was because this little rule went on to make the rest of my boss fights ridiculously hard to beat. But more on that later. For now, let's go shopping with all this money. Alright, Piggy, what do you have for us? Ooh, a new weapon. A long range with below average damage that requires no aim. We'll say no more. Sold. Oh, wait, I should have probably gone through every item before buying on impulse like that. Well, better late than never, am I right? Let's see, an extra heart. Spread shot with decent damage. Invisible dash that provides temporary immunity to damage. Take my money. Dang it, I did it again. I cannot buy anything with two coins. Wait, is that Miss Piggy from? Kermit the Frog? Any chance I can buy that poster for one coin, good sir? Nope. Alright then, two coins. Nope. Fine, keep your poster. I didn't want it anyway. How about three co- Boy, he sure loved that poster. At least I got my two new sick items to use. And with those two upgrades, I made my way to confidently face my very first boss of the game, Goopy on the Grande. And what do you know, this chaser gun was absolutely broken. Since I didn't have to put any effort into aiming, it was relatively easy to dodge his jumps. But then he surprised me with a sneak attack by springing his own face at me. That's got to hurt him more than it hurts me, right? And since I lost a life and needed three to get an A+, I immediately quit to retry. The second time, I made it to the next phase as Goopy here doubled in size. But because he took up a lot more space in the screen, he smashed one of my HP. My third time went a bit more smoothly as I managed to beat him with all three lives remaining. But completely forgot to parry and use one super. It's weird because I was pretty sure I couldn't find any pink objects at any point in the- Oh look, there they are. Okay, now I'm getting that A plus for sure and- Ooh, forgot the supers again. Come on, come on. But right, this time for sure I'm getting that- Oh, what? One star for skill level? But look at my stats. What am I missing? Only a regular battle will let me collect the soul contract? Well, that's just- Well, since the game didn't let me continue without playing the regular mode, 
old. I did just that and finally got that sweet A+. Plus. <laughs> on my 16th attempt. By now, I think you can tell why I said this was a mistake. Because this right here went on to happen so many times. But it was too late to back out now as I was determined to make history. And so, with an unwavering heart, I made my way to the bottom of the island to fight the meanest and the baddest vegetables of all the land. The Vegetel Trios. Now, unlike Goopy who had three transformations, this time I was up against three different vegetables that had their own unique styles of attack. The first one was a potato that spat mud balls at me with a pink worm that trailed at the end for me to parry. So long as I timed my jumps, it didn't pose much of a threat. The next one was an onion that cried its eyes out, causing tears to fall on me. The pink tears were especially hard to parry, but I managed to get one with a bit of finesse. Last but not least was a crazy looking carrot that seemed to love giving himself a head massage. With my chaser, I was able to easily deflect any carrot missiles from hitting me. His last attack though, which was a psychic beam from Pokemon, almost got me. But luckily, I dodged it with the rest of his attacks to defeat the veggie trio, ending with a, uh, dang it, not this again. Hold on, give me one second. Ah yes, that's more like it. Now that that's over, let's move on and- Wait, what? Is that a money? Holding money? That's actually hilarious. Let's go talk to him. Hmm, seems like he's not gonna give us any money like the apple. Even though he's a way more fitting character to do so. Well, that was surprisingly uneventful. I guess we'll just get on with the next boss. And right off the bat, these guys came out strong as the big guy whom I'm guessing is Ribby threw flaming fists at me in three different lines. It was already hard enough to dodge them, but to parry off the pink ones meant I had to be extra focused. Eventually, I realized that there was a pattern to it and got used to this part of the phase. Well, most of the time. Time. After that fiasco, Ribby then tumbled in my direction and started throwing what looked like radioactive balls while the other guy turned into a fan to hinder my movement. Getting past the first two phases was the easy part as the two transformed into a giant slot machine that turned the final phase into a living nightmare. The coin coming at me wasn't too bad, but what really threw me off was when it pulled the lever that randomly generated one of three insane snare drum attacks. The yellow one was by far the worst because I had to perfectly time my jumps if I didn't want to get sandwiched. Needless to say, this one took some time to overcome and with much trial and error, I finally did it three bosses down and many more to go wait is that a fish with a fishing rod money holding money fish that's fishing this game just keeps getting better and better anyways let's talk to it something about ghosts and parries and what are you talking about well that made no sense i guess i'll just leave her to keep fishing for her siblings all right time to head north pause now little did i know this mausoleum i completely neglected was something i had to go through in order to make this challenge a bit more bearable for those of you who've played the game will definitely be shaking their heads in utter pity but for those of you who haven't yet well you'll find find out later on. For now, let's get back to the game. Okay, where were we? Ah yes, traveling north and also completely ignoring this obviously important mausoleum. Anyways, I moved up on the map and found this guy, who resembled more of a thief than a pilot, and he told us to study the blueprints on the right, which was essentially a tutorial to learn how to fight with a plane. Pretty self-explanatory. W to shoot, shift for special moves, full meter for a super special move, space for parry, and D to shrink. Alright, I'm ready to go full on Top Gun Maverick on the next boss. And with that intensive training, I took my next battle to the skies with the blimp queen herself, Hilda Burger. Now, Hilda had quite the arsenal of attack patterns up her sleeves. There were her plane minions that shot bullets, green minions that shot more bullets, tornadoes that she created with a wave of her arms, spat words that hurt me literally, and many more that was seriously giving me a hard time. Furthermore, she had three forms she turned into each with their unique sets of attack patterns until eventually transforming into a freaking moon monster with UFOs and stars and ah! It was safe to say that Hilda was full of surprises and it came to the point where I had to actually think of a plan to beat her. My strategy was to first get the three parries in the beginning, use the super special move early on to fill the first five meter, then survive like my life depended on it until I could eventually use my super one last time in the end. Retries after retries, I got it as close to an A, but was still short of that perfect score because I constantly went over the time limit. I then ditched the plant altogether and just rushed to finish her off as quickly as possible and parried anything whenever I had the chance. And doing so got me the dub and that A+, plus, which taught me a valuable lesson. Plans are overrated. At this point, I was two hours into the game and I wanted to check my progress. 20%? Already? At this rate, I'll be done in no time. Yeah, I regret saying that later on. Whatever, it's time to earn some money. Okay, this is a lot harder than I expected. And a lot harder it was as I was stuck playing it for half an hour. The most apparent issue with why it took so long was because of my smoke bomb. When I tried to jump and dash to the next platform, I'd sometimes miss because I didn't have a good grasp on how far I was dashing forward. So I swapped the smoke bomb with a different charm and went with a classic normal dash. Oh, and I also went to the shop with the money I got from the first run to buy an extra heart and the spread shot to boost my success rate. And what do you know, I got that A plus with ease. All it took were some minor changes. Okay, a lot of changes. On to the next boss. No, oh, aren't you on a door? Well, never mind. Fighting against flowers over here was proof 
believed that the bosses were gradually getting harder. And here I thought Hilda was bad when it came to filling up the screen. Turns out this guy was even worse with his boomerangs, barrage of mini umbrellas, many many floating plant monsters, and his face lunging straight at me. Like Goopy here wasn't enough for that. Even after you get past the first phase, the next one requires staying on the second floor at all times as he covers the entire floor with his stems. Oh, and did I mention he spits pollen and the stems spring up as well? Flowers was a freak of nature, but nonetheless, I was still eager to get that perfect score. The gun I used to beat the previous stage wasn't very effective this time, so I switched it with the chaser again. It helped me to be more agile since I didn't have to worry about aiming, but because sometimes it killed the plant that spat the pink balls for me to parry, I resorted to parrying the pollen at the last phase instead. Also, I definitely needed all four of my health to leave some room for error at the final phase. Many tries later, I started to see myself appear in the final phase a lot more than usual. My palms were sweating as right here was my 19th attempt. I used up every super I had at flowers and prayed he'd get knocked out. But the tough flower he was, he continued to attack and I lost the heart. Losing that one heart made me panic, but shortly after what felt like eternity, flowers finally fell. Thank god I had that extra heart as I wouldn't have gotten through without it. Beating flowers opened up a whole new part of the map, which was called Inkwell Isle 2. On our way to the next island, the wise kettle stopped us to tell us how much stronger we have gotten since the start of our journey. He tells us that with our newfound strength, soon we'll be able to defeat King Dice and even the devil himself. He then ends it by telling us to make the right decision when the time comes. Whatever that means. Anyways, onward to the new island. Whoa, we're at a carnival now. Oh look, that thing that taught us how to fly. Seems like he added an upgrade to our plane. We can wallop our foes with bombs now? I gotta see this. Whoa, we got bombs for bullets now. And look, we already beat the first phase. I don't know about you, but with this new boost, this genie guy was fairly easy to beat. It could have been my luck at the time because this one did have some tricky attacks coming my way. But a win is a win, so I'll take it. Despite getting my hopes up from the last easy win, I went on to battle one of the most difficult boss I have ever encountered in the entire game, Miss Baroness Nashor. You know what, let's just call her Bonnie. Now my first impression of Bonnie here was already terrible. She'd usually cower behind her castle and send out her candy underlings to fight in her stead. Each one had completely different attack animations that took some time to get used to. Plus in the second phase, these little jellybean critters would storm out at any given moment to charge at me, which added to the chaos. With my current items, I was in no way gonna get a perfect score. So I made the necessary adjustments by equipping the smoke bomb for added invincibility and the pea shooter for the burst damage. Not having that extra heart nerfed me quite a bit, but I had no choice as I needed to smoke bomb to dodge Bonnie's homing missile of a head. There will be times when I'd lose a life right before knocking her out and also moments where I'd be one parry away from that A+. In fact, I lost count of how many times I didn't get that last parry off which cost me the perfect score. Needless to say, with a bazillion tries, I finally bid Bonnie farewell as I dealt her the finishing blow for that much deserved score. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I mean, it only took like, I don't know, an hour and a half to beat her. After spending so much quality time with Bonnie, I immediately marched onto the next boss to make up for lost time. Please be easy, please be easy, please be easy. Hey, this isn't too bad. I just gotta jump over this joke of a clown. <laughs> this clown was no joke as he didn't fare any different than Bonnie. The first phase and the third phase was manageable as it only involved jumping over his charges and avoiding the hoops with a well-timed dash. But his second and final phase was so bad it made me want to puke. Not only did I need to constantly jump over the ragdolls and the coaster while avoiding the inflatable dog head, but the part where I had to dodge the baseballs thrown at me as I traversed through the moving platforms all the while looking out for the coaster on the bottom was just too much. For this guy, I definitely needed that extra heart. However, without the smoke dash, this boss really pushed me to my utmost limit. Maybe it was all the dodging from Bonnie's homing attacks, but I somehow tapped into my inner matrix as I weaved through all the baseballs thrown at me. And with another wave of magnificent dodges, I somehow triumphed over this clown. It's official, I'm gonna have nightmares tonight. Before taking on the next challenge, I wanted to do some exploring and found this creepy lake and oh, there's a face. What are you even supposed to be? Sir, you almost gave me a heart attack. Wait, I think he wants to tell us something. Through all your battles and all your rhymes, you have failed and perished 31 times. <laughs> Okay, that's enough exploring for one day. Oh, you know what? Let's check our progress right now. 38% still? But it's been six hours. Will I be able to complete this challenge? I guess there's only one way to find out. On to the next boss. Now, Birdie here was another one of those plane battles, which wasn't that bad. Compared to my encounter with Hilda, all the bosses I had to fight in the air seemed a lot easier for sure. This feather attack, though, did surprise me just a little bit. Maybe because back in my teens, I used to play a lot of these old school fighter jet games, but I surprisingly got through it with ease and beat the half dead chicken. Okay, I think it's safe to say that plane battles are so easy. Now. now we all know at this point any remark made to boost my ego comes biting back at me and to prove my point here's a little sneak peek to the foreseeable future are you kidding me how do you even get through this all right back to the game now at this point i had one more boss left before i could enter the last and final island but wait what is this over here is this what i think it is that's right it's the mausoleum i blatantly ignored in the beginning of this challenge oh what's inside the mausoleum well i'm glad you asked you see it so happens i needed to parry off some ghosts which the fish did mention to obtain what's 
called a super ultra special skill also known as a super art and what's funny is that it could have literally taken me half the time it took to finish off all the bosses i have faced until now and that's because with the first super art when you have a fully charged meter you can use it all up to deliver a horizontal projectile blast that does an ungodly amount of damage to your opponents even though i wasn't able to use them at the start i was still blessed to now be able to use these super arts against the remaining bosses as a matter of fact i don't think i would have gotten through the second half of this game without him especially the second super as it literally gave me five seconds of invulnerability anyways with this wonderful discovery i made my way to the last boss of this island grimmy the matchmaker at first glance grimmy came off as a silly dragon that tried his best to give off alpha energy but little did i know that he was gonna hit me with lasers meteors tail attack double meteors fire babies flame orbs that burst into four-way attacks and a flamethrower on top of that the platforms would constantly be on the move which meant i needed to be constantly on the move many failed attempts later i finally came across the perfect weapon against the beast which was this baby right here you know what they say fight fire with fire it's called a charge and i happened to buy it from this last run and gun challenge with the hot dog which i did get an a plus for this gun was the answer to all my problems as its damage output was absolutely out of this world and that was exactly what i needed against this guy more damage and since i could hold on to the charge before firing it it made dodging a lot easier too one other thing that i needed was my first super art instead of the second with the second super art it helped me to stay in the fight longer but doing so would only prolong my inevitable demise by the four-way attacks at the end which is why i changed my setup to a full-on damage build because hanging around on any of the faces for too long meant i was at risk of making a mistake more often one last shot with my super art and grimmy here was history man he was a tough one after my battle with grimmy i checked to see where i sat in terms of progress as i was 10 hours into the game and to my delight we were finally past the 50 percent mark seeing how far i've come i gleefully made my way to the third and final map brimming with hope as we enter we see that king dice and the devil talk about how well we were doing against the soul debtors king dice then tells the devil to keep his guard up when we arrive but the devil assures him that he'll be ready for whatever we throw at him we'll see about that buddy we'll see and here we are in well l3 now i would usually take my time and explore around the new place but because time was of the essence i quickly made my way to the first boss who was named rumor honey bottom well will you look at that the bottom is actually honey after my fight with grimmy i was not at all happy to be back in a moving platform environment but since this one had a more forgiving pattern i wasn't too disappointed i got through the first phase without breaking a sweat but the second phase where rumor summons pink spheres triangles that shoot mini triangles and spat bullets on both sides of the map cranked up the difficulty quite a bit because of this i had to change back to the chaser so i could concentrate more on evading even then i still had a hard time on the last phase with her fist chasing me around and her sneaky saw attacks so to combat that i used the super art that granted me temporary invincibility and my goodness it was a lifesaver good thing i didn't miss that second mausoleum <laughs> yeah i'm definitely not over it the next boss was a pirate who himself wasn't much of a threat the thing that messed me up the most was this annoying barrel that would fall at random intervals it would sometimes drop in conjunction with other things to create an attack that pretty much guaranteed to get me hit especially when combined with these swirling bubbles it was just illegal but hey nothing a little invincibility can't fix and by using my second super art at the end it completely nullified the deadly combination as well as everything that came as a threat and with a few more hits bada bing bada boom i took him down along with nabbing that lovely a plus by defeating the pirate the bridge up ahead opened up where i took on this run and gun challenge but for some reason getting the three parries for this one took more effort than i had anticipated during the game this fish right here would sometimes not spawn at all which forced me to quit and retry until i got good rng there were some pink shrimps to parry near the end but with how fast they flew at me it wasn't very practical nevertheless with a bit of luck i got those three parries and safely made it to the end and got this challenge out of the way after that i found another mausoleum to obtain my third super which wasn't anything too special so i ended up not using it at all then i talked to this fork guy and unlocked this super cool filter that only hurt my eyes so i'd revert back to the original one and then i realized i wasted too much time doing all that so i followed it up by taking on the next boss around the corner werner brothers now this guy took the definition of cramp to a whole new level the initial phase with the catapults and cannons were decently maneuverable but when i got to this part with the bottle caps and the two-way flamethrower it couldn't have been more claustrophobic with all these obstacles you would think i would use the second super art to bypass it all right well i couldn't as i needed it for when i got to the last phase so i could dodge all this other nonsense so in order to maximize my mobility i equipped the smoke bomb instead of the extra heart even though i was at a disadvantage with only three hearts i was able to avoid most of the attacks with the smoke bomb and easily got across the other side of the screen and then i went on to get that knockout followed by an a plus oh crap it so happens i took too long on the second phase since my chaser gun was too weak and so i used the pea shooter with a higher dps but that meant i had to actually aim for once which i haven't been shamelessly doing till now it took some time to get used to but eventually i made it to the final phase where i used my super 
Scorai in the crucial moment to dodge the Kitty Paw, finish him off with my Chaser, and got the score I wanted. After my scrimmage with the Tom and Jerry ripoffs, I went up north and saw that the road had opened up that led to a theater. This theater featured someone who desperately waited for my arrival. Someone who wanted my presence so bad to help her climb the ladder of showbiz. And it was none other than Sally, Cinderella wannabe. Leave it to the crazy actress to put on a dastardly show as Sally begins her assault with a series of flying kicks followed by a fan attack and dropping from the sky. She'd occasionally blow her vile kisses to entice me, but I would just parry my way through all of them. Sally then gets married and invites me over to her house where she commands a baby to throw his bottles out the window to catch me off guard while she summons a swarm of toy mice to fill up the screen. But I bob and weave through all of them and send her flying to heaven. Then she comes back as a goddess of war and starts throwing lightning, meteors, and tidal waves to stop me dead in my track. But with a bit of repetition, I got through them and faced her in the finale. As she sways back and forth to thank the audience for their standing ovation, I eventually steal the show by relieving Sally of her stardom. And just when I thought it was all over and done with, I fell short of one stinking parry. Frustrated beyond belief, I reviewed my battle against Sally and saw that this star didn't count as a parry. Getting all three from the smooches wasn't gonna cut it as doing so would put me over the time limit. My only shot at getting that last parry was through this rose thrown by the audience, in which I had to be right under it for me to get the parry off. After countless attempts, I thank my lucky stars as the rose fell right above where I was standing to bestow on me my third and final parry. And with a sigh of relief, my glorious battle with Sally came to a close as I left the stage with a perfect performance. Fighting Sally took a lot out of me, so I went to take a breather by getting the last run and gun map out of the way. Who am I kidding? This map took me a whole 30 minutes to beat. Frantically running from this cyclope wasn't what I had in mind when I said I wanted a breather. But along the way, I discovered a gun that would change the course of destiny for all my remaining bosses. Say hello to Roundabout, the finger gun that I believe to be the best in the game. I'm surprised I'm only using it now despite seeing it in the beginning of this whole endeavor. I mean, this gun was simply made to fight Cloppy over here. I kid you not, the damage on this gun was impressive to say the least, as well as the range and the rate of shots fired. It truly was the dream gun and I was blessed to have stumbled upon it before facing the last remaining bosses. Look out King Dies and the Devil cause you're about to rue the day you scammed my brother. Oh man, I wanted to use the roundabout. Alright, well I'm sure this won't- Iron Giant. Quite the thing of beauty I must say. One of its many lovely features includes a laser beam that takes up one fifth of the map, this battery thing that creates a border that closes in on you, and it produces mini drones to fill up the rest of the open spaces. If that wasn't clogging the screen enough, after you destroy them all, they change to a whole different attack pattern to fill the screen up in a completely new way. How you may ask? Well for starters, there's the cannon that shoots bolts and nuts, then we got the hands that reach out and retract leaving energy balls flying in both directions, a magnet that tampers with your movements, and a homing death missile that has way too big of a hitbox which made me question if the designer was asleep when programming it. The crazy part was that this was all in the first phase which made me have nightmares about what the second and the last phases had in store. Oh and did my nightmares come to reality as the second phase was an absolute bombarding fiesta with the head of the robot constantly swishing back and forth. And if you thought that was bad, <laughs> wait till you get a load of the final phase. It was basically the same as Birdie's feather attacks but on steroids. What were the developers thinking? It's like they knew I was gonna play this game for 24 hours or something. My battle with Bonnie was cute compared to this guy as I went on to fight him for more than 2 hours. The funny thing is because I played him so many times, I actually memorized his entire attack pattern to the point where I had all 4 of my hearts intact. Who would have thought, right? 2 hours of my life I'm never getting back. Very nice. Let's hurry up and finish the game before I lose my sanity. Wait, what? Why do I have 10 coins? Oh yeah, I forgot to use them after my last 2 run and gun challenges. Well, you know what this means. Let's go shopping! Maybe get myself some whetstone and ooh, what is this? No way, this one gives 2 two additional hit points? I could tank so much damage with this. Yes, please. Oh man, I'm one coin short of buying this next one. Biggie, buddy. We go way back, right? I bought a lot of stuff for you. You had some pretty good items for me to buy. Any chance you can give me a discount? Come on, for old times sake. What do you say? Goodbye. Well, he lost a customer for life. Forget that. I'm four buses away from finishing the game now. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's catch up some calamari. Fun fact, after my struggle with the Iron Giant and also because I now started with five 
cards. Well, let's just say I was cruising through this boss fight. Her attack patterns were very straightforward, and I saw them coming from a mile away. The only supposed challenge was when her three pirate ghosts charged at me while she swarmed the screen with these puffers. But even then, it was nowhere near as difficult as my previous ordeal. Nonetheless, I got the score I needed and headed north where I crossed the bridge to fight my last boss for this island, Phantom Thomas. And since I was back to battling on land, it was time to put my roundabout gun to good use. And boy, did this gun do wonders for me. With its insane firing speed and high damage, I bulldozed my way through each and every one of the phases in record time. Even when this lollipops vomited lightning that went from one end of the screen to the other, my second super art took care of it with no problem. However, for the final phase, I had no choice but to change back to the chaser as Thomas kept moving back and forth when his heart was exposed. And with a few more shots, I sent the galloping train back to the underworld, securing my last A plus for Inkwell Isle 3. At long last, after hours and hours of clawing my way through every foe to undo the horrible fate that awaited me and my greedy brother, I gallantly made my way to take on what may very well be my greatest challenge yet. Before taking on the devil, I had to get through King Dice first. He wasn't like any boss I've faced so far as I had to first battle my way through 3 of 9 bosses before I could get to him. But it seems like they were only there to try and bring my health points lower before I could get to the big dice. Which made them not very difficult to beat as most of their attack patterns were pretty straightforward and easy to dodge once I got the hang of it. However, it all changed when I duked it out with the king himself. Jumping over these was surprisingly hard as I had to pull off a pixel perfect parry on one of the pink cards if I wanted to bounce off safely. Even when I had 5 hearts to start with, this attack decimated most of them. Furthermore, this conga line would sometimes have a gap so far apart, I had to dash my way to the next pink card, which made me lose a heart every time. Nevertheless, I somehow made it through my first bout with the dice, but at the cost of a very bad performance. My second attempt went a little better as I was improving at timing my jumps to get across the end, but I was still losing my heart here and there as there was only so much I could do against these huge gaps and the occasional mistakes I would make. Good thing I had my second super heart as I was able to save myself from this one wave and beat the king with all three of my hearts. However, all that effort went to waste because I forgot to use one super, which was so unfortunate. So to make sure I didn't forget the next time I used this super during one of my mini boss fights and then used my super art when I got to the king. And just when I thought I was assured the A+, I failed again! Apparently 4 minutes and 21 seconds was over the time limit. I was fed up with playing safe now as I switched my second super art with the first one to go all out this time. And surely enough, by blasting the square head with my first super art to kingdom come, I beat him in under 4 minutes which finally got me the A+. Only one boss remained between me and the completion of this game and it was the devil himself. This sinister being lived up to his wicked name as he had many different forms he transformed into that caught me off guard several times throughout the battle. He also used an array of dark magic that scattered everywhere for me to dodge all the while sending his devilish minions to stampede towards me. Keeping track of all this madness took a toll on my concentration and I lost the heart, but since I still had 4 to spare, I pushed on as I followed the devil through the hole which led me all the way down where awaited his true form. Out of his ears came pink bats that had a massive hitbox as well as an axe that rotated around the screen. He summoned more of his wretched henchmen to hurl skulls and cartwheels while poker chips dropped from above. Because I was focusing on one too many things, I accidentally lost my footing and fell off the platform putting me at 3 hearts now. Losing one more heart meant I had to start all over and overcome every single one of the devil's attacks again. Plus, I only had a few minutes left before finishing this game in under 24 hours so I couldn't afford to retry several times only to not make it in time. So after telling myself all that in 0.5 milliseconds, I did everything in my power to stay alive as long as possible. And my sheer willpower manifested as I made it to the final stage where the devil was in tears knowing his time was about to end. At that moment, as the poker chip was about to fall on me, I used my super art one last time to evade it while I basked in the glorious few seconds before I brought the devil down and finally got my very last perfect score. And with this, our super long challenge of an adventure comes to a close as the two brothers free the entire residents of Inkwell Owl from all their debts, as well as promising to keep themselves from getting into more trouble. For now at least. By the end of this challenge, I managed to get that juicy 100%, as well as get an A plus for every single run and gun challenges and boss fights for the entirety of the game. On top of that, I literally had 0.3 minutes left before I hit that 24 hour mark, which is absolutely insane. Hope you guys enjoy watching as much as I enjoy playing. Also smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Plus I want to get monetized so please. But in all honesty, I only want to put out the best of contents out there for you guys to enjoy. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!